Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about the all-time high 100 container ships stuck in San Pedro Bay. Now before we get started I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers consisting of lease on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities running under our truck dispatch services as always guys big big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos please do keep them coming let's talk about this uh you know all-time high number of ships stuck in san pedro bay you see there was a hundred uh ships stuck over there on sunday they managed to decrease the number to 73 ships uh, by the same day and inch it back to 69 ships by tuesday but there's still a ton of ships in fact i'm going to show you a video in just a second that kind of gives you a visual representation of what's going on in socal right now in uh the san pedro bay because you know a picture is worth a thousand words so we're going to watch that and then i'm going to switch over and we're going to discuss the rest of it all right guys so what we're seeing here is a total of a hundred ships uh, you know maybe in this video they got the 73 or maybe it's the 69 but the bottom line is as you can see through this video we have a ton of ships every one of these has a ton of containers there's lots of freight lots of product that's been uh, you know bought and paid for that needs to come to warehouses for distribution and for it to be picked up and delivered throughout the different countries so that consumers can make the purchases all of these ships are either docked, anchored, or are waiting for a berth. Welcome back guys. So as you saw, that's a, a whole lot of ships out there with a lot of our product still on there with a long, long dwell times that have been increasing more and more. Now the Marine Exchange of the Southern California is actually claiming that 36 of the 73 ships had to be set adrift out in the ocean because anchorages were completely full and they basically just set them out there and say, hey, you know, you guys hang out here until your time arrives. And uh, the, unfortunately, a number of ships could actually increase in time because of the way that um, ocean freight operates the prices for our freight is uh, uh, are increasing every single day so it makes sense for them to go using that pathway if we will because they're able to make more money there uh, rather than other ports now the socal gateway is like a narrow tube on a funnel so what happens is that you put so much uh, at, at the top but only so much can get through because they have to process these ships get the products off get it uh, reloaded with more uh, you know freight as export or send them back empty and the problem is not so much at the ports which there is an issue they can only you know pr basically process only so much but uh, there are issues with terminal space there's issues with warehouse space uh, you know trucking is a big part of this you know we've talked about uh, truck and trailer shortages we've talked about truck driver shortages you know I'll leave cards here in the corner for both of those videos they're definitely something uh, of an eye-opening experience to get an idea of what's actually going on in the industry but there are also issues with the rail uh, limitations out there they try to put this freight on rail rail get it to other parts of the country and then truck it from there and that's creating problems as well and uh, what we ultimately have now as you saw in that video is a massive floating warehouse of imports that simply cannot dock and get it off of the ships and uh, to kind of give you an idea of what dwell time looks like we're now at six days of uh, container dwell time we're at uh, on dock rail dwell time is at 11.7 days 8.8 um, .8 days of street dwell time so this is all time that uh, the product is just sitting around there before it can get shipped out and actually get to warehouses and stores and uh, they thought about slowing down the ships in order to you know kind of slow down the process be able to process what they can and get more ships in the problem is that this will create a secondary problem of backing up vessel supply chain and uh, they definitely don't want to do that as it will create an additional uh, issue to deal with now what's interesting is that u.s exports are down by 23 percent and i think the reason for that is because u.s is paying china 20 to thirty thousand dollars per container to get it shipped to the united states yet u.s has only paid three Three to four thousand uh, dollars in order to uh, basically you know ship some exports out there so china just basically says we don't really want your stuff we just want the containers back because we'd rather make twenty to thirty thousand dollars than make the two to three thousand dollars so it doesn't really make sense uh you know you know for that to happen so you you know we we're basically having to pay uh, an arm and a leg for the products that we are used to using every single day and with exports being down this is uh, obviously going to hit the u.s economy as well uh, something else that's happening is sailings are actually being uh, canceled because ships can't get back in time 
and uh, you know, product can't get out here. So the manufacturers out there are basically canceling uh, ship uh, orders completely. All our, you know, a lot of this product is, is going to get backed up, and we are going to see more shortages because of this alone. And ocean spot freight rates, as I mentioned, are at historic uh, highs. And uh, what's kind of driving this is the cost and because there's just basically a shortage of containers and ships and all the other things that we've talked about in previous videos. And again, I'll find those videos on postcards in a corner, but also understand that a lot of these companies, the ship uh, carriers, if you will, they're actually topping off their rates by uh, you know charging them premium charges for dwell time, for waiting, for basically detention time as we know it in the trucking industry. So the question is, how do you feel this is going to affect the US economy? Please, you know, weigh in in the comment section below. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's see how this is going to affect. I mean, personally, I think that we're gonna have to go through all this product right now to be able to get it throughout the country, ship it out, and uh, there's gonna be plenty of work and rates are probably gonna increase further and probably stay steady for some time to come. But ultimately, this is still going to create all sorts of uh, uh, problems in the supply chain in the United States. Uh, this is going to hit the economy and this will affect every American uh, in the United States, of course, everybody living in the United States. So guys, leave your comments in the comment section below. Hit that like button if you haven't done so. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'm gonna switch over to camera. We're gonna look over the loads we book for our customers and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back, guys. Let's take a look at some of these loads. Obviously, there's port congestion, but the freight continues to move. As I'm going to show you, lots of great freight for vans, reefers, flatbeds, and even power only. I'm going to start off with a reefer coming out of McCook, Illinois, going to Fort Worth, Texas. It's an 8,000 pound load of uh, food grade uh, products, minus one on the reefer. 977 miles booked at $4,500, got them 461 a mile. Then out of Dallas, Texas to Austin, Texas. This is a load of onions, uh, 40,000 pounds on a weight, easy in and out. Uh, real short load and uh, 195 miles booked at 1500 bucks. Got them 769 a mile. Very good run for Dallas to Austin. Uh, then we got San Antonio, uh, Texas, going to Salisbury, North Carolina. 40,000 pound load of apples at negative 10 on a reefer. 1,270 miles booked at $3,800. Got them $299 a mile. Then Warsaw, North Carolina, going to Jessup, Maryland. This is a 34,000 pound load of fresh cut chips. 327 miles booked at $2,000. Got them $612 per mile. Then right out of Jessup, Maryland, zero deadhead going back to Bolingbrook, Illinois. This is a 42,000 pound load of uh, frozen food. 719 miles booked at $2,059.23. Got them 286 a mile. As you can see, very well done. Coming out of Illinois, getting back to Illinois. A very good market and at some really good prices. They ran from Monday to Monday, grows $13,859 dollars and 23 cents uh, running 3488 loaded miles at 397 uh, the 397 per loaded mile average. So very good average, great gross, very good miles and hit some very, very good markets. Next, we're gonna have ourselves uh, a dry van coming out of Wenatchee, Washington, going to Platteville, Colorado. 10,000 pound load of insulation that was originally booked at $3,200 plus a $300 detention at the shipper. Got them uh, $3,500 uh, 3, for 1,205 miles booked at 290 per mile. Then Golden, Colorado, going to Flagstaff, Arizona, is a truckload of beer. It was booked at $2,100, but we got an additional $200 tonu that was there for a, a cancel load earlier that day. 669 miles booked at $2,300, got them uh, $344 per mile. Then right out of Phoenix, Arizona, going to Puyallup, Washington, longer run, 27,000 pound load of floor uh, flooring materials, uh, 1,426 miles booked at $4,840, got them $339 per mile on lots of miles. So these guys ran Monday to Monday, dry van, $10,640 in gross, driving through the Rockies, ended up running 3,300 miles on the dot at an average of 322 per loaded mile. Very, very well done. Then we have a power only coming out of Hazelhurst, Mississippi, going to Phoenix, Arizona. This was a drop and hook trailer that was already loaded with some groceries, uh, so no time was wasted at the shipper or the receiver. 1,479 uh, miles booked at 3,000 bucks, got them 203 a mile. Then right out of Phoenix, no deadhead, took a load to Upper Marlboro, uh, Maryland. This is a long run here. It was another drop and hook load. Uh, picked up the trailer with a huge generator. Uh, you know, it's 50,000 pounds of the trailer and generator together booked at 8,000 bucks, but we got an additional $150 in a tonu for a cancel load previously. And uh, that's 2,309 miles booked at $8,150, got them 353 per mile on a ton of miles. Uh, you know, 2,300 miles is a lot of miles. 
and uh, these guys ran Thursday to Friday making it for eight days but Sunday was taken as a break so ultimately it's seven days of actual driving ended up grossing eleven thousand one hundred and fifty dollars uh, in gross and as power only and uh, they ran 3,788 loaded miles at an average of 294 per loaded mile average. Very, very well done. Next, we're gonna look at a, uh, a flatbed coming out of Austin, Texas with a one pick, two dropper to Margate City, New Jersey and Princeton, New Jersey. This is a 28,000 pound load of lumber that required two eight foot tarps. Uh, 11, uh, 1,813 uh, miles booked at five thousand dollars got them 276 a mile and then at a morgantown pennsylvania going to Ehrenberg, arizona long run here forty thousand pound load of truck body parts that required four foot tarps four chains and four straps ultimately they ran 2442 miles booked at seventy four hundred dollars which got them 303 per mile very very well done keep in mind this is a flatbed which generally the flatbed markets his has continued uh to stay uh, you know, lower than vans and reefers. In any case, they ran for eight full days of driving on just two loads alone. They ran 4,255 loaded miles, grossed $12,400, um, and uh, ran their miles at 291 per loaded mile average. Very, very well done. Next, we have a reefer coming out of West Point, Nebraska, going to uh, Tafikaman, Pennsylvania. It's a 38,000 pound load of groceries at 38 degrees on a reefer, 1,228 miles, booked at $5,100, got them $4.15 per mile. Then at a Swedesboro, New Jersey, going to Opelika, Alabama. It's a 30,000 pound load of oranges. It was a Walmart delivery, 885 miles, booked at $3,300, got them $3.73 per mile and Decatur, Alabama to Danville, Virginia. It's a 43,000 pound load of miscellaneous products. The reset was done on this load. Uh, the 538 miles booked at 2650, got them 493 per mile. So these guys ended up doing very well, grossing $11,050 uh, running Monday to Monday, plus had their 34 hour reset done over the weekend, ran 2651 loaded miles at an average of 417 per loaded mile average. Very, very well done. And uh, we're going to look at a van to van. These guys always do well. Uh, Green River, Wyoming, going to Grapevine, Texas. This is a 42, 43,000 pound load of a uh, truckload of chalk, basically. Uh, 1101 mile booked at 38.50, got them uh, 350 per mile. Then Ennis, Texas, going to Ardmore, Oklahoma, 40,000 pound load of dry food. 145 miles booked at 1,000 bucks, got them 690 a mile. Then Arlington, Texas to Clarksville, Arkansas. It's a 35,000 pound load of beverages. 354 miles booked at 1700 bucks, got them 480 per mile. Then right out of Clarksville, Arkansas, no deadhead going to Rural Hall, North Carolina. It's a 11.8 on the load of clothes, 881 miles booked at $3,000, got them 341 a mile. Then uh, Kernersville, North Carolina to Middleton, Delaware. Uh, 42,800 pound load of non-hazmat batteries, 424 miles booked at 1900 bucks, got them 448 per mile. And they ran Saturday to Saturday, gross $11,450 in gross, ran uh, 2,905 loaded miles at an average of 394 per loaded mile average. Very well done on this one as well. Next, we have a reefer coming out of Sioux City, Iowa, going to Gainesville, Georgia. 40,000 pound load of frozen meat, 1,118 loaded miles, booked at $5,100, got them 456 a mile. Then Norcross, Georgia, going to Morton, Mississippi. It's a, a 30,000 pound load of meats, once again, 369 miles, booked at $1,100, got them 298 a mile. Then Carthage, Mississippi, going to Moorfield, West Virginia. Uh, just six uh, pallets of fresh chicken, it was 15,000 pounds on the weight. 14 hour uh, load time, plus a six hour unload time unfortunately uh, we're still waiting on detention on this one and that does happen with chicken loads especially the ones that have to be basically you know uh, killed you know plucked you know washed clean processed uh, packaged it does take quite a bit of time so 870 miles booked at $3,300 got them 379 per mile on this one and they, the, then they finished off with Timberville Virginia going to News, uh, Newport News Virginia uh, so a quick run there, 41,000 pound load of frozen chicken, short load for the hours available. So 215 miles booked at 1400 bucks, got them 651 a mile. And they still did very well. Even with the setbacks, ran, uh, running Friday to Friday, grossed $10,900. 
uh, in gross running 2,572 loaded miles at an average of 424 per loaded mile average. And we're gonna finish off with a dry van coming out of Rancho Cucamonga, California, going to Waukegan, Illinois. This is a load of packaging materials at 39,000 pounds on the weight. 2001 mile booked at $6,500, got them $325 per mile. And then Appleton, Wisconsin, going to Shreveport, Louisiana. This is a 43,000 pound load of uh, paper. It's uh, 1,013 miles booked at $3,800, got them $375 per mile. So overall, these guys ended up running Tuesday to Friday. Uh, running 3,014 loaded miles, which included him getting uh, 343 per mile. Uh, running their 3,014 miles got him $10,300 in gross on just two loads this week, and they started only on Tuesday, running till Friday. So just a handful of days and over $10,000 booked up for this guy. Very, very well done. And guys, as I always say, you can make this kind of money as well. If you're not making money like this, you definitely need to be taking advantage of this. This is the opportunity that truckers have been waiting for, for the markets to really support them, the hard labor that you guys put in, all the liabilities that you guys take on. And we are here to support you guys in getting this, uh, these kind of rates whether you're a leased on owner operator or a carrier operating under their, your own MC authority. We do provide services for both types of truck drivers that are out there. If you are a leased on owner operator, give us a call or text us. Uh, the same thing can happen with you're a carrier. We also work with you as well. Our phone number is 801-448-6363. Call or text. Also go to our website at aftdispatch.com forward slash go. You can also uh, take a look at our uh, chat box at the bottom of our uh, of, your, of the screen when you go to our website. Fill that out. We'll get back to you with more information and you can get started with us rather quickly. If you have any questions, call, text, leave us a comment in a comment section below and I'll see you guys next week. Be healthy, stay wealthy. Take care.